I am going to get my eyebrows done right now, which comment if like your eyebrow lady always asks if you're like single or if you're married or has a lot of personal questions and what do you do to handle them politely? Hey, we got the brows done. I don't know if you can really see in this light. I'm gonna try and jump on a Peloton ride. It's been a minute. I feel like at least the 20 minute classes like feel somewhat manageable. So wish me luck. I also did not think the threading through because I feel like every time I sweat after I go threading it burns. Is everyone else the same way? Um, I don't know, wish me luck. I mean 20 minute 2000s ride with Cody, absolutely yes. have to know that I work out for my mental health. I think that is so important. I feel like it's the best thing I can do for myself. I never ever feel bad after a workout. And so just even those 20 minutes, like I already feel it's just so much better. The endorphins are flowing and I feel like people don't talk about exercise with mental health as often as we do about everything else and how we look and everything. Shifting the thinking from losing weight to mental health has been really helpful for me. Does it always happen? No, absolutely not, I'm human. But just like even thinking that, it's like, no, I'm doing this to make sure that my mind is healthy. And yes, by default, of course, like your body is healthier, but the main intention is just taking care of my mental health. So for those of you also kind of on that journey, I hope this helps. I'm so out of breath. I'm gonna shower and uh, get right. I always love putting like a little bobby pin just to like pin this back and I feel like it really like lifts and opens your face up too since I already have like this in front of me. I think it's really cute. It's date night. I thought I would do some date night makeup today because I haven't done that yet here. And it's kind of that season between end of summer, transitioning to fall, but it's still really hot and it's sweaty. And you know, it's one of those weird kind of transition months, not weird. I actually really love fall, so I'm quite excited for it. But today I'm wearing my hair curly, as you can see. And I feel like with curly hair, I feel cute, not necessarily like super hot or sexy. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't think I'm the only one. Like, I just feel like a kid. Like, I just feel a little younger. So on days I'm wearing my hair curly, I really like kind of doing my makeup a little more, you know, sultry. So I thought I would show you how I'm gonna get ready. In the meantime, please subscribe, like, share, do the things that you're supposed to do on YouTube. <laughs> And last time I did my makeup, I was showing you how I covered my acne. I'm happy to report that it has gone down. It's still, you know, there's still some lingering effects, but I'm not gonna do that stuff today because I feel like this foundation is enough. And I'm using the same foundation, the Armani Luminous Silk, which I really love. I've worn them for so long now. The first time I wore this foundation was on the red carpet at Venice Film Festival when Complexion was coming out. No, much longer coming out, sorry. It was, um, we just like released the trailer and the concept had just been presented, I guess. And so that was really cool to work with Armani Ben. Shout out Tim Quinn, you did my makeup uh, for the red carpet, that was so fun. All right, you guys, got the Tim Quinn Glow Up. It's so pretty. But for those of you who don't know, for film festivals, there's places where you pitch your concept and people can invest in your film. And that's actually what we were doing for our Complexion in 2019, so long ago. And that was when we got our first round of funding. Venice Film Festival and Armani just holds a very, very special place in my heart. And I feel like I'm really attached to nostalgia and brands that have been part of my journey and the journey, this is not sponsored whatsoever. I'm just telling you the story. <laughs> but yeah, I, it, it always just reminds me of that, which is always nice. And it is, the foundation is bomb. This is the same concealer I used to cover up the dark spots. So if there's anything like a little extra that I feel like I need, I'll just take it, take it down. This is a spot that you wanna get for sure, is like this inner corner 
because that kind of like sets your contour line. And today we're gonna to be contouring. I'm using a little bit of the Armani concealer. I'm not gonna lie, this little puff, like it's one of those Amazon things, I think it was like $6, works really well because with a beauty blender, the it picks up the excess product, but this like really presses the product into the skin. If you're doing something where you want more full coverage and if you have acne and dark spots as I do, then it's actually the perfect, perfect little puff. I think it looks nice. I only put my contour halfway. You don't need to bring it all the way down. Otherwise it kind of cuts into your blush and you really just need like a little stroke here. And then we're gonna do a little bit on the nose. I used to be really, really specific with my makeup. I was always nervous because I had had issues working with people who did not know how to work with my skin tone and complexion. And so it was honestly just easier for me to do it myself. And I'm really glad, but I was always into makeup as a kid. And this is where I struggle with makeup is like this going back and forth of, did I enjoy it because it's artsy and creative, which I feel like I am really artsy and creative, but there's like this beauty element of it that I'm always trying to work through of, well, do I do it for me or am I doing it because I get a certain reaction from society or society treats you better if you go out looking a certain way, which is very true. And that is the society we live in. And that's like a constant ongoing internal monologue in my head. But let me know what you think because I really want to be able to have these conversations here because I think they're important. Obviously, I enjoy beauty and I really do like getting ready and that process and I have enjoyed that since I was young. But as I try to just grapple with these themes of beauty standards and the cost of beauty, which is something I always talk about and the mental health side of it, I don't think we can progress this conversation unless we actually just more actively start talking about it. And so I'm very curious to hear your thoughts and how, as you've gotten older, um, or if you're young, maybe how your relationship with beauty has changed, if it has changed, uh, because I feel like that's a really important piece of this conversation. Also, I have recently discovered Ilya um, mascara and I really, really love it. I used to be a Dior girl through and through. I discovered it in high school. I was a bougie ass high school person. Like I clearly, I loved um, makeup and Sephora since I was in high school. I don't buy the Dior one anymore, but the L'Oreal one is just as good and it's half the price. And the Ilia one, I actually just really like because it's clean beauty and I'm trying to switch over. I'm trying really, really hard to make the switch because I do think that's important, but also clean beauty is still kind of a mystery category because the beauty industry is so unregulated that I really do try to do my research, but I'm only one person. And so I don't believe everything in marketing because not everything is real <laughs> uh, as I have found for better or for worse. Uh, but the only thing we can do is just, you know, continue to educate ourselves and um, talk more about it. This is a fun game. I'm curious to know like what product did you buy purely because of marketing, specifically marketing for a product that you remember when you were younger that you're like, I have to have this or even now, I think talking about brand ads are interesting or maybe an influencer you follow. I feel like that's also interesting too of what they said. And then did you like it or did you not? That is what I'm always curious about because I just want to be like really transparent during this process and I grapple with like recommending things and not recommending things because obviously I use things every day but uh what do you guys want I feel like that's maybe the best way to just talk about this is ask like what you want do you feel like you come here for products do you want to know what I'm wearing is it helpful let me know why you're watching I think that's fun to know too I got this hourglass palette on sale over I think the holidays, uh, no, Black Friday, and I am really obsessed with it. it. There's everything in there, which is awesome. I'm trying to do five products or less and see how that's working for me. I'm at five right now, exactly, and we're gonna, we're gonna have to go get one more. <laughs> I've worn Mented for years. Uh, it is one of my favorite nude lipstick brands. I'm using the Foxy Brown for my liner because I feel like that just gives me definition for the lips. And then this like pretty little pink shade in number one crayon. 
I feel like it's it's subtle, but it still kind of pops a little. I'm gonna go get dressed. Jumpsuit I'm wearing is from Rent the Runway. It is Nicholas. Thank you, boyfriend, for helping me get my bracelets on. Always a struggle. They're Georgiana. My shoes are from Gucci. I got these at the Gucci outlets in Florence for 240 euros. They were such a great price. This belt is from BCBG. I've had it literally for 10 years, threw on my bag, and then spritzed a little bit of the Frederick Mall perfume. It is what I'm loving lately, and we are ready to go. Thanks for watching.